morning, everyone. Uh, so today is the first class after my retreat. It was an amazing retreat, and I'll tell you more about it in, in kind of future classes and my closer classes this week. But basically, one of the first lessons um, was for to see how the monks um, can hold the lotus or can hold the sitting position for a very long time. And they did it without kind of any yoga or any training. They do have anesthetists. So I kind of got in deep into researching what were the recommendations from kind of a Buddhist set point in terms of asana practice for, for you to get into a lotus. And for me, kind of half lotus are the Padmasana, which is this position, came quite naturally. Um, but I think it came quite naturally because it was doing exercises for my pregnancy at the same time. So, and then there was a lot of like these hip opening movements in which you're like, you're preparing to give birth. Uh, so I think that helped quite a lot. So what I did is I tried to mix things from what I learned in, in kind of these Buddhist scripts about asana practice in order to allow you to come into a comfortable sitting position. And what I have learned from before, and also what I remember from kind of my, my times when I was in, in during pregnancy in a couple of kind of the movements that we used to do. So we're actually going to start, uh, and this is going to be a sequence that we're going to build on top of each other, on top of it, on top of it. So we're actually going to start into our hands and knees. Uh, and this is funny that we're going to start with the hands, but then uh, so you just bring it to come into your fist and bring the fist out. So, and I'll explain you why. So the reason we're going to start into our hands is because I did notice that, uh, funny enough, when you start to hold tension in your sitting position, you bring tension into all kinds of parts of your body. That goes into the fist, into the breast, into the forearms, into especially your jaw. Um, your lower back, your upper back, your neck. And as this class is tending to go into Padmasana, bring your hands looking up into the ceiling and then put a little bit of weight into the hands. If you can go forward, go forward. Otherwise, stay a little bit to the back and just allow kind of the opposite side of the arms to stretch out. So, so the idea with these exercises is to allow you to open your hands into a way or open your wrist and your forearms into a way that is safe for you to practice uh, and that allows you to practice without bringing extra stress and extra kind of burden into your arms and forearms and others. Now bring your hands towards your knees, hands facing up again, same thing, try to go forward as much as you can, but then whenever you see that it's too much, stop. Now bring all the fingers together. You're going to feel either a very nice and pleasant kind of stretch into the inner side of your arm, or you're going to feel something that is not as nice. And instead of kind of focusing on the sensation and like this slight suffering, focus on what is it that is getting a stretch? Really going that into it. Release your hands really slowly, one by one. Moving the way to the back, release your hands. Make small circles around your hands. Small circles around your hands. It's early in the morning for some of you, late at night. So you can mix some of the circles with a little bit of cat cow. Move your hips, find something that works for you. And then change side. Really try to involve all the body. Tuck your toes. Bring your chest, the chin in between your hands. Into Ashtanga and Namaskar. Feel how your lower back, your upper back is opening. 
bring the ribs in, stay in that pose, bring the ribs in and feel how this protects your lower back. Now on top of the toes, and then slide forward into your first cobra, very small cobra. Keep the elbows inward, keep pushing through the, front, uh, the top of the feet. Maybe go a little bit higher. Exhale slowly, release the forehead down. Tuck your toes. Use the hands to pull yourself back into child's pose. Find a very, very long spine here. Breathe once again. Try to bring the ribs in toward the center. Move forward. Extend the legs. Downward facing dog. And pedal your knees. We're going to start with a little bit of movement into the legs. Bring your right knee up. Bend the knee, open the hips. Try to keep the chest looking down. Try to keep the hips even. Now open, open the hips. So focus on the opening of the hip and start to make circles towards the outside with your bended leg. With me, there is always sand. Whenever I make this pose, there is a sand. And I think it's because of the disposition of my hip against my femur bone. What I try to focus is on making this a pleasant sand. Now change directions, bring the knee inward for five, four, three, one, release. Bring your left leg up, extend, extend, extend. Bend the knee, open the hip, but try to square your shoulders down, your, your chest down. Same thing, circles outward for five, for four, for three, for two, one, now inward, for five, four, three, two, one, release, stretch, push the hips back. Bend the knees, look forward, walk and or jump towards the front of the mat. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, release for your first Uttanasana of the day, your first forward fold. Bring your hands against opposite elbows. Feel the stretch into the back of the legs. Hamstring flexibility is important for your lotus. We'll work a little bit on it and in your psoas. Bend the knees really slowly start to go up. Hands in front of your heart, and then hands in front of your, and then push your hands together. Samastitihi. Control your breath. Focus on your breath. Trying to feel how your toes really, really grasp into the mat. On the inhale, bring your hands up. Slide back, bend if you can. Exhale, fold forward and down. Release your hands on either side of your feet or a little bit forward. Bring your right knee to the back, knee down and stand or come into your crescent pose, your low crescent pose. Bring your hands into your hips and start pushing your hips forward, opening your psoas and also the hamstrings into the, into the right leg, front leg, the left leg, sorry. You just make small movements, up and down, up and down. Release your left hand to the left side and Open your body, your right side body towards the left. You might not be able to reach the ground. You can keep the hand into your hip, which is actually a lot better because it 
it really brings extension a lot more. And you can keep yourself a little bit high. Don't, don't go as deep as you need and you can and it's good for your body. Release, have both hands up. Bring your right hand on top of the knee, left hand. Once again, push, now push your chest away with your hands and your legs forward. Release your right hand, bring it into a big, big circle. Try to grab your back leg. So maybe just, if you cannot really lift it, just lift it a little bit and stay there. You feel that sensation of almost touching it, almost grabbing it and stay there. If you can't hold it, bring your foot towards your buttocks and now move forward. Now push with your foot away from the body as you move forward. Really stretching into your quads, engaging your quads. Release your hands and keep the foot wherever it is. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Release. Now bring your left hand up, release it down, open your right hand up into the sky, into kind of an extended side warrior with your knee down. But you feel a strong sensation into your left hamstring. Circle your hand, bring both hands down. Move your left foot a little bit outward. So it's kind of facing diagonally in the corner of your mat. On top of the back toes, come into the outside edge of your right foot. Then come into boomerang. So lift your left leg, a uh, left hand up. Move the hand towards your feet, boomerang pose. It comes with a big stretch into your IT band, the inner side of your groins. Circle your hand forward. Start to move a little bit lower. Maybe bring your forearms down. Again, with the top of your foot down into the mat, this is a bit different from your normal lizard pose. If you cannot bring the forearms down, you stay with the forearms up, it doesn't matter. Whatever you are, forearms or not, start making these more circles around your leg, around your hips. Bring the knee down, now tuck your toes and do the same. Notice any difference with the toes stuck and the toes untuck. Move back and forth, back and forth. Release your hands down. Once again, lift yourself. Bring your toes looking towards the front of the mat, your left toes looking to the front of the mat. Release your back heel down into the mat. Once again, keep your left hand down. Circle your left right arm forward and come into extended side angle. We're gonna hold here for five, for four, for three, for two, and one. Now continue the circle. Move into reverse warrior. Get deep into the pose. We're going to skip some poses here. We're going to do two rounds. Okay, so extend the leg. Move forward. Find a preparation for trikonasana triangle pose, but stay where you are. And use your hips and your legs, the strength of your legs to keep yourself up. If you can, bring your right arm forward and keep yourself into trikonasana, but like you are holding a beach ball towards the front. 
Really feel how the legs have to work here as well as the core to keep yourself here. Holding here for five, four, three, two, one. Come into your warrior two. Breathe. Breathe. Circle your hands forward. Your sequence is finished. Once again, move around your hips. Find the space. Bring your left foot to the back. Stretch. Bend the knee. Five circles towards the outside. Five circles towards the inside. And then release. Right leg goes up. Bring the knee towards the chest, release in between your hands. Back knee down. Same thing as we did on the other side. So on the first part, bring your hands into your sacrum, into your hips, push your buttocks forward, your hips forward, find your crescent, find this nice extension into the left side of your psoas, your right hamstring. Bring your right arm up, release it to the side, then open the side body towards the right, really opening the left side. If you kind of go all the way to the floor, bring the hand into your hip, keep the stretch into the side body, which also goes into the psoas and your inner hips. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, so bring your right arm down, right hand down, push forward. Beautiful. Nice. Feel the stretch, push the chest away, move the knee forward, push the chest away, knee forward. Chest away, knee forward. Hold here. Now release your left hand. Move it towards the back, then lift your left foot. If you can grab it, you grab it. If you cannot, you just stay there trying to move your hand towards your foot, your foot towards your hand. If you can grab it, you're going to grab your foot, move it towards your hips, move it towards your buttocks, Feel the extension into the front side of the psoas. Move down. Hold for three. Hold for two. Hold for one. Slowly release, but keep the foot where it is. Hands into the prayer. Hold it. Five. Four. Your hamstring is going to possibly start to tell you things too. One. Release. Keep the toes on top, move the hands forward. Start to move forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. Keep your right hand down, open into your left. Find a really deep stretch into the side. Stay there. Stay where you are. Slowly circle your hand forward. Come into this kind of preparation towards lizard. Again, toes and tuck. And if you can move your forearms down, start making small circles and back and forth into your legs. Finds the juiciness into the hips. We work a lot into the hips.
bring your hands into the floor if they're not already there. Now you with the toes on top, you move your foot into the outside edge, your back foot into the outside edge. Your right foot is going to slightly move towards the right side corner of your mat. You're going to allow the hips to move down. Nice stretch into the side of, uh, to kind of the outer side of your left neck. Boomerang first. Hold it for one second more. Release it. Circle your hands forward. Bring your foot in between your hands. Bring your right hand once again into the inner side. This time your knee is lifted. Circle your arm forward. Find forward and a five extended side angle. Hold here for three. Hold for two, look at your hand. Last time, circle your arms back. Find your reverse warrior. Find the stretch. Really hold from your hips. Extend your front leg. Move forward. Try to look for your trikonasana, but don't go into it. Stay there into that movement into trikonasana. Maybe if you feel strong enough, you bring both arms forward. Then imagine you have a beach ball in between your hands and you keep your trikonasana here. Hold for three, for two, for one. Inhale, lift, bend the knee. Warrior two. Last hold for five, four, three, five, two, one. Circle your arms forward. Bring your back toes up. Move back into downward facing dog. One legged trick on one legged dog. Bend the knee. Open your right hip to the side. Circle your leg towards the outside. Circle your leg towards the inside. Release your foot down. Move forward. Bring your knees down. Chins, chin and chest down. Slide forward into small cobra. Exhale. Move back. First part of the sequence, so uh, this one is going to be one more sequence and we will be done. Each water class, go back into your downward facing dog. Before moving into the other side, we're just going to jump or walk forward, but walk towards the outside or jump towards the outside of your hands. So in any case, bring your feet together, bend the knees, bring the knees together, Regardless, you're going to use make a big step or a jump. Prepare as you were going to jump. Look in between your hands. On the next inhale, grab all energy. Exhale, prepare and jump. Put on the outside. Try to sit and try to fight your malasana. As you always hear into my classes, you're going to hear my beautiful knees making noises. Move side to side and into small circles into your melasana. Melasana is one of those poses you have to just keep doing. Keep doing. It's absolutely necessary for everything. Keep your hands into your heart. Now use the legs to lift yourself up. Hands up, bring your feet together, release your hands in front of your heart. Inhale, hands up, small back bend. Exhale, release your hands in front of your face and heart. 
one more story in her hands up. It's more back. Exhale, this forward. Forward and down. Inhale, look to the front. Bring your left foot to the back. Same thing as we did before. We're just going to pass a little bit faster. So move up into your crescent. Bring your hands into your hips. Push forward. Release your right hand down. Open into the left, into the right side. Opening the left side of your body. Feel the extension. Just for a second. Both arms up. Right hand down. Left hand down. Push forward. From this sensation of pushing, circle your left hand back. Try to find your foot. If you find it, amazing. If you don't, you don't. It's okay. Nothing happens. Don't like magically transport into another place when you do this. If you have the foot, bring it really close to your glutes. Now make an opposite strength by just pushing your foot away as your arm is trying to bring it in. Engage your quads. Release your right hand down while you try to keep the back leg engaged. A little bit of change into the pose. Release it down. Open your hand up into the ceiling for extended side angle with your knee down. Feel that your tricep is pushing against the knee, the knee against the tricep. You're opening the inside of your hip. Release it down. Bring your right foot towards the right side corner, or your toes looking towards the right side corner of the mat. Move your body towards the right. Come into the outside corner of your foot, of your left foot, and release into boomerang. Make a small jumps up and down into your hips. Now circle your hands forward once again. Keep the foot kind of pointing towards the right side corner. Release your knees, your elbows down, your forearms down. And then start to move back and forth into your lizard pose. If you want, you can bring your right hand into your right knee and push the knee away. Slowly release. Keep your right hand into the inside of your right foot. Bring your back heel down into the mat. Your toes start to point again towards the front of the room, your right toes. Inhale, circle your hand forward, extended side angle. Once again, hold it here for three, hold it here for two, and one, circle your arms back, reverse. Holding here just for a breath. Extend your leg, move forward. Find the preparation for Trikonasana. Bring both arms forward, or maybe not. It's completely okay if you don't. Hold for three, two, one. Now look at the right side corner of your mat, bend the knee. And then push your body or move your body towards that right side corner, opening into an Ardha Chandrasana, a half moon. Option here into this new pose for this sequence is to bend the knee, send your foot towards the back, maybe you grab it, maybe you don't. Same thing as we did when we were into our knees. This is called Chapasana. If you pull, just go back and try it again. Release the foot without slingshotting it back. Move your hips down, use your hands, keep your hands down into kind of this warrior three with your hands supporting. Move the knee up. That this is going to be a very small movement. The knees are still bent. You're going to move the knee up and down. Up, it's a micro movement, and down, and then up, down, two more, and then up, down, 
bend both knees or keep both knees bent slightly start to move forward into your standing leg find balance keep the knee as it is bring your knee into a four-legged kind of into a forward into your legs find the balance here and slowly start to move forward 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 try to bring your elbows in front of your foot but if you don't have the balance release the hands down or if you have a wood in front of you or a table use gravity or a sofa we're working on the hips so more important than the balance is finding that sensation into the hips if you notice this is a pigeon but it's hunting pigeon Inhale slowly, move up into the chest. Keep it up. Release the foot to the back. Both legs extend, move towards the right side, though towards the left wall, sorry. Your foot are going to be both looking towards the wall, heels out, toes in. Inhale, open a little bit, exhale move forward down bring your hands against your ankles or your heels bend the knees one by one and start finding a space bring the hands down move your toes outward continue with the movement side to side maybe keep your hands down or Bring your hands into a prayer and then make it a little bit lower. So if you bring your hands into a prayer, you can pray with Eskandasana. But if it's too much for you, you just bend the knees slightly and move side to side into kind of a surfer's lunge. Wherever you are, go for another three, go for another two, go for another one. I'm gonna make a fun new transition here. Trust yourself, that's all I can say. Open as wide as you can with the legs. Now walk your hands towards your hips. Leave your heels and lift your toes up and then maybe you fall. Otherwise, you just trust yourself and then go to down. That's what I used to do for like seven years. Legs are wide into very wide, wide leg. Forward fold, start moving your chest forward and back, chest forward and back. For three, for two, and one. Bring the feet together into Baddha Kanasana. Bring your feet as close to your hips as you can. Bring your hands into your knees if possible. And you should start making a little bit of butterfly with your hands or bring your hands into your feet and then butterfly yourself here opening your legs as they were butterfly wings last pose bring your feet a little bit wider than your hips separate them as they are a bit kind of wider than the mat and then we're going to start moving towards one side and then the other and then one side and then the other one side last time and then the other move towards the front of the mat find your pigeon your half pigeon here this is the last part of the sequence repeat it on your right side go as deep into your pigeon as you need for your pigeon, you can try to bring your foot on the same line as your knee, or you can bring your foot really close towards your pelvis, and then maybe go a little bit deeper. The more that your foot is towards the front, the more that your foot is parallel to the knee, the deeper the kind of um, flexibility you're gonna gain onto the inner side of your hips. So it's your choice. It's about where you are. Stay down. We're going to stay for about five breaths here. 
you're coming to my classes before you know that I really used to hate this pose. And I only found peace with it recently. When I really started to feel how amazing I would feel afterwards and then discover the juiciness of the post when I was in it. Last breath here. Inhale, come into your hands. Tuck your back toes. Leave yourself up. One leg, fly, uh, one leg dog. Knees rotate towards the outside five times. Now rotate your hips towards the inner side. Interestingly now, after the two sequences, my hips are not sounding anymore. Downward facing dog. Bring your left leg up, preparing into the other side. Knee to the chest, release the foot in between your hands. Back knee down. Inhale up, hands into your sacrum. You know, the sequence we're going to just do it on the left side. Bring your left hand up, release it to the side. The other hand circles towards your left, opening your right side. You can keep the hand into the hip if you need it. Inhale, point arms up. Bring your left hand down, right hand down. Push the mat the knee away with your chest. Find an extension into your psoas, it's fine. Circle your left hand to the back. Try to lift your back uh, toes and maybe grab your foot with your hand. It doesn't happen, it just doesn't happen. Now, you're gonna make opposite kind of exercise here. You're gonna push your foot away from you and at the same time, you're gonna try to bring your foot towards your uh, towards your hips and your buttocks. For three, for two, one. Release it, bring your left hand down and open into kind of this supported extended side angle. You can circle your arm forward. Your tricep is going to go against your knee, your knee is pushing against the tricep, feeling the opening of the pose. For three, two, one, change arms, change hands, right hands up, down, sorry, left hand circles around. Same thing, but we're going to go into a boomerang. So on top of the toes, or make sure your toes are on top, move into the outside corner of your left, of your right foot, and then find boomerang. Your left toes are looking towards kind of the left side corner of your mat. I love this pose if I'm really juicy into the hips. Circle your arms forward. This time, tuck your toes. Move your foot a little bit towards kind of the outside corner. Keep your toes towards the left side corner of the mat. Bring your elbows down, your forearms down. If you want, you can push the knee away with your hand, your left knee. Hold here for three, for two, and one. Release down, bring your foot a little bit towards the center, your toes are pointing towards the front. Once again, left hand is down. This time your heel, your back heel goes down into the mat. Circle your arm forward in front of your face. Extended side angle. Hold it for three, for two, one. Circle back, reverse your warrior. For three, two, one. Extend the leg, move into your triangle pose. Maybe find your beautiful triangle pose. For three, two, one. Bend the knee, look towards the left side corner of your mat. Start bringing your weight forward. Release your hand down, find Ardha Chandrasana. 
half moon. Same thing as we did before when we were in the mat. Try to bring your foot towards your hand into Chapasana. If you find it, great. It took me a long time to find it. If you don't find it as well, just keep the knee bended, keep the hand towards it. One more breath without sling chowing. Release the foot, keep the foot or keep the knee inward. Now move your hands down, find your hips in line for kind of a supported warrior three. Then we're gonna bring the knee up and down with small mini movements for three, sorry, for five, for three, uh, for four, for three, <laughs> for two, and one, the three is stuck into my head. Bring the knee towards your chest, lift yourself up, bring the knee again into your chest, this time standing. Your foot crosses on top of your leg, making a four with your legs. Slowly start to move down into this pigeon pose, but standing, you can just move your hands down and bring your arms in front of your foot and go as low as you need and you can, or bring the hands down. More than the balance, what we're working is on the hips. Make any movement that you find necessary. I like to do a little bit of kind of jumps here just to kind of bring movement and elasticity into my hips. Where you are, inhale. Stand yourself up, knee into the chest, release the foot towards the back, and move towards the right wall. So look towards the right wall. Toes out, heels in, hands into the hips, open. As you move forward, toes come in, heels go down. Move down into Parutanasana. Bend the knees. Find the juiciness of side to side, side to side, side to side. Now your choice. You're going to bring your hands into a prayer, then you skip moving side to side into a server lunge. Or you can go deeper into skandasana. We're gonna do this for five. Four, three, two, and one. Return to center. Open your legs as wide as you can. Now lift your toes up. Come into the heels. Come into the heels. Go as deep. Start to walk your hands towards your hips and release your buttocks down. Or maybe it's not as elegant. Mine is not as elegant as it could be, so we're all where we are. Open legs, same thing. Start to move either hands into your hips or hands forward. Start to move hand back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for five, for four, for three, for two, and then one. Beautiful. Lift yourself up. Bring your feet into Bharatanasana, so feet together, hands into the side. I'm going to change, move towards the camera, you can see me. Bharatanasana, options, hands underneath your feet, and then you just start to move your legs up and down into your flying butterfly here, or hands into the hips, and then you just do the same, which is going to a little bit move your chest forward to keep the balance. This time, bring your hands underneath your hand, underneath your feet, open your feet as they were book with your thumb, and maybe using your form, you're gonna press the legs, move down into Bharatanasana. Try to bring your forehead down, but if it doesn't come down, it just doesn't come down. Somewhere to look forward that is not somewhere where you need to run. Beautiful. Hold it for one more breath. 
Slowly release. Open your feet a little bit wider. So even wider than the mat, a little bit wider than the hips, but less wider than kind of your knees if they were open. And then you're going to start moving side to side. 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 Last two. Last one. We finish towards the front of the mat, almost into a head tap for a pigeon. So you find your pigeon, look at your back foot, make sure, kind of bring your knee into the same line as your hip with the toes stuck. Once you find that there is a straight line there, release your foot. Your front heel is going to come as close or as far away from you as it needs to be. I'm doing the same leg just because I changed then your left leg should be in front. One side is very always very different from the other. In this side, I can't square my my feet and my hips as much as with the other one. So just notice if you have the time. Maybe you can just pause the video and stay here for a little bit longer if you find that kind of you need a lot more here because you're a little bit farther away and you want to grab a little bit of balance. Otherwise, just stay here for the same five breaths. Release that as much as you can. Four, three, two, and one. Bring your hands up. Find your pigeon. This time, allow the hips to move down. Bring both feet towards the front. Release kind of any tension, but also find a little bit of looseness here. We're going to finish our class today into two options for your Shavasana. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring your feet together once again, but in Tadasana. So you're going to make a diamond with your legs. The feet are going to be a bit farther away from you. And same thing, you're going to move forward maybe with a little bit of resistance at the beginning, elasticity at the beginning. Just grab your feet, move your head down. If you have the space, maybe you move the arms underneath your legs or you're high up here and it just doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's just not, it's not about where you're going, it's about the way and make the path. So if you make the path smiling, it's even better than kind of arriving to the place with a big grin into your face. Smile wherever you are. Find your peace into the pose, into this Barakanasana. Release down. And slowly use your hands to lift yourself up. Keep the legs as they are. Move your hips a little bit closer to your heels and using your forearms to start to lower yourself down. I'm gonna make a short chavasana into this parakanasana, but if it's too much for you, you just open your legs and go into your normal chavasana. Again here, if you have more time, come into your Shavasana for a little bit more of time. Otherwise, we're just gonna stay here for a minute. Focus on your hips. Notice any difference into your hips. I normally feel really juicy into my hips by the end of the class. Start to bring awareness again into your body. Just 
slowly bring your left knee up and roll all in your body towards the right side. Using your hands, make your way up into a sitting position. It's now time to test our Parvitanasana. So open the eyes slowly. And we're going to start with the left leg up. So bring your right foot really close to your pelvis, really, really close to your toes. Lift your left leg and just bring it up. Maybe if you find enough space, you just can find kind of your baby here, your baby leg. For Laura and others, if you have kids, and you know you can like kiss it. You can kiss your foot, it's a nice time to kiss your foot. Then from here, from this position of, of just moving your hip side to side, try to find your foot on top of the other hip. So you're moving from the hip, not from the knee, which is normally what happens into your Parvatanasana. And then that's your half lunges. And if that's what you have, great. If you don't have it yet, it doesn't matter. Maybe it's here, maybe it's low. Maybe it's kind of a little bit up and it's bothering you. Maybe your knee is really high up. It doesn't matter. It's the path. You're in the way to it. If, if your knee, and only if your knee is down or very close to the floor, only if that is happening, you bring your right foot from under. And if that is happening, you can, as my daughter does, without your, her hands, you can just move your foot up or use your hands and bring it in. And then here is your Padmasana. But it only happens if your left knee is already done. Then here it is. It's really about a lot of the opening into the hips. So you saw a lot of opening into the hips, a lot of like juiciness into the hips. We're gonna try the same into the right side and see if it comes to any difference. Really slowly use your hands to bring yourself down. Now, left foot really close to your pelvis, really, really close to your pelvis. Now lift your hand, lift your foot, your right, left foot, then if you find, if you can, kind of find a kind of a, how do you say it, cuddling or like, um, like a rocket gro from side to side, cuddle, cuddle it into your arms. I'm sure I'm gonna remember the word after the class, I'm gonna be like, why well, didn't remember it? You just move it side to side, side to side, side to side. Then really move the rocketing really close towards your left hip. Release the foot down and leave it there. It's like dropping the baby down into your lap. You're dropping the little one into the lap. If again your knee is down into your padottana and your padmatanasana, you bring the other foot from under and you bring it over. And again, you have it on the other side. And one side tends to be easier than the other. In one side, I tend to last for longer. Um, I find that if I'm doing meditation, I have to, I have to come into the other side. Um, so I have to come here instead of kind of the the right foot first. Um, but you find whatever works for you. And again, this is a path and it's a long path. Like it took me a couple of years to try to find it. Find for now your favorite sitting position. It could be your newly found or kind of better arrived position of Padmottanasana. It could be a Sukhasana with your feet under your knees. Doesn't really matter. Find that juiciness into your hips, bring your hands in front of your heart. Focus on the newly sensation into your hips, into that new space that you have created there. And be grateful for it. It's really good to have and to find a space where you didn't have it.
Bring your hands into your third eye in between your eyebrows. The lotus pose is all about finding a more stable pose to sit, to meditate. But you don't need to have Padmatanasana to meditate. Bring the awareness into your third eye and that's it. Bring your awareness into your breath and that's it. That's the space for meditation. Bring your hands into your mouth. inward. Thank yourself for giving the time and the effort to do the pose and the whole class. Bring the hands into your prayer in front of your heart and just release that.